today that all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV. But where are those good old-fashioned values? This is Seth MacFarlane. We're here with uh, commentary on Blind Ambition with uh, executive producer David Goodman. Hi, how you doing? Executive producer Chris Sheridan. Hey, how's it going? All right, hey. I'm going to say it. Chris, do you want to back up? So no, no, he can no, 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 it's fine. It's all good. Okay. And uh, writer Steve Callahan. <laughs> Hello. I already told Seth to stop it and start it again. <laughs> two seconds in, we've made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of the history of this episode. Uh, when in, in Family Guy's third season, and after it was off the air, six... Five. Scripts, five scripts were commissioned by the network with the possibility of Family Guy getting picked up. And this script was one of them, so it was lying around when uh, the show got picked up last year for Don't you like it more now? <laughs> knowing, that it, knowing that it was lying around? <laughs> lying around is dusty. It was just laying around this like an actually, old shoe. Uh, this is actually Judd Hirsch that did this. Yeah, to say Judd two, Hirsch. I think he literally says two words. <laughs> I think more so that he's a fan of the show and not that he really needed the money. Yeah, yeah no, that's actually... We're all, we're all Dear John fans at Family Guy. <laughs> I actually was a Dear John he, fan. He did another show, too, didn't he? Wasn't there another show that maybe uh, George could have referenced Leo. instead of Dear John? Yes, yes, it was Del Vecchio. Oh, that was it. That uh, was it. Del Vecchio, early Stephen Bochco cop show. So anyway, you, to pick up on you, what you were saying, these scripts were written back in, what, like 2001? Yeah, but then Seth took a big shit on me for bringing that up. Oh, oh I decided okay, sorry. To just drop it. But okay. go ahead, Steve. No, no, no. And then, uh, you know, we all thought the show was canceled, and so we, we figured they would just go in the recycling bin or something. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and then we were able to turn them into some good episodes. This is uh, one of several times where we show God as kind of a lascivious uh, kind of player. He's always out to... It's really from Mormon doctrine. We really wanted uh, the Mormon's view of God. David said that, not me. <laughs> I, don't know, I just heard they come after you. <laughs> now, this storyline had the potential to be a little creepy, and we hope that we made it enough in Quagmire's char- character. The fact that, that be... Quagmire is watching Lois go to the bathroom. It's not yeah. creepy at all. I mean, it's totally yeah. natural. They I mean, did he's... that on Still Standing, I think. He's America's lovable sex pervert. I think we got a letter of complaint about this. I'm sure more than one. <laughs> Would you just sit down and go to the bathroom already? There's a bit of realism, though, but there were no covers for the toilet. And, uh, the don't touch table at least. We were just told not to touch the table because it's making too much yeah. noise. Yeah. Okay. It's, Sorry if we were it's bothered. It's reverberating in the microphone. Read the sign. Am I touching the table? <laughs> Uh, is this still Gina Gershon's That's voice? That's a good question. At one point, that it was, I think Gina, it was Gina, Gershon. Gina Gershon doing the voice of the uh, policewoman, and uh, it may still be. <laughs> you can check the end credits. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Either way, she got paid, so that's really all that matters. So this is the episode that Judd Hirsch has two lines, two words in, and Gina Gershon as well. It's a good example of one of those episodes where that, that are really, in a lot of ways, it's it's three individual stories that are linked together. Each act is essentially its own story, and it's linked together by by a thin but solid thread. This is the first time, also, that uh, it's. But it works for this show. This is the first time that it seems to have come out that Quagmire has a little something for Lois here, and the first mention of uh, Bonnie's uh, pregnancy. Also, just actually so embracing the idea that maybe there's a, something wrong with Quackmore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that course, this might yeah. not be acceptable behavior. Yeah. Pete, um, yeah. Of course, Peter's defending him to the death, and uh, this is somehow Lois's fault. Here's the uh, chicken. There we go. See, there was a... Uh, that was a... Uh, what episode was that? Uh, what? That originally... The boom. boom. The Boom, of course, yes. And uh, But that was something we never knew was going to be a big, huge thing, I and mean, we just wrote that as a bit, and then... Yeah. Caught on so much on in people's consciousness that we figured we had to bring it back again. This, this well, was kind of, you this short was... on Daboom too, wasn't that the problem? That's why you made the chicken fight so long. I don't, I don't think it no, was. No. I think it was just an experiment, oh. and, and you know this this uh, this was something that you know there, there were some fans that said, ah, oh, they're going back to the chicken again so soon. We we kind of this was kind of our yeah, our sort of years, but... our sort of message to the fans that don't worry, it's it's going to be all the same. Well, also, this this whole uh, run, originally, I think we placed in the Cleveland Loretta Quagmire. 
That's right. But, yeah, that, that's right. but that show ended in a big uh, fight between um, Cleveland and Quagmire, so we thought we'd move this fight to this episode. Also, this episode was short, I think. I think Same it, uh, music cue by uh, Walter Murphy as from the first time around, too. This is a great shot here. Well, we should give a lot of credit to you know the directors who did this because they had a big task to outdo the first one. I mean, the first fight was so big that yeah. they really did a good job of making this feel even grander. Yeah, it really, it, it definitely tops it, you know. I still feel actually that this one little tiny thing is that when the chicken first comes in, I still, I wish that the chicken could have come in in the middle of uh, Peter's sentence. It always bothered me that penis, Peter finished his sentence before the chicken comes jumps him. Did you just say penis? Penis. Well, it's, it's his middle name. Right. I don't know how you'd top this one. I guess the chicken would have to actually come out into your living room and be fighting with Peter, which is impossible at this time. I love that, that, that shot, too. Suddenly, Quahog is New York City. It's like mm -hmm. the biggest buildings on the eastern seaboard. Yeah. yeah. I think they could have a lightsaber battle on a lava planet. Oh, there you go. This is one of many oh, Raiders. Raiders references. Yep. What's that a reference to, lightsaber battle on a lava planet? Uh, that was the uh, most recent Star Wars movie. Oh, uh, Seth, yeah. I think. You didn't see that? I have not seen it. Interesting. I have not seen it. Yeah, well then. Yeah. I'll go see it. You should go take a look. It's good. Uh... That's a great sound. Yeah. It's a great sound. Who made right? that sound? I mean. That was one uh, that is a sound. Every once in a while, our uh, animatic uh, editors, animatic being the rough uh, uh, filmed storyboard that we look at before any actual animation gets done. They put in rough sound effects and, and temporary sound effects, and they, they found that chicken squawk from somewhere, and it was so funny that we just kept it in for the final. Normally all the sound gets redone by, uh, by our sound effects editor, but occasionally if something's really funny, we'll keep it in. Now, we had a couple of different gags here for how they were going to rehabilitate uh, Quagmire, and we had to cut some of them for time, but one of them involved Brian backing a huge forklift of pornography, pornography out of his house. Yeah. <laughs> All <laughs> Quagmire's porn. It was I, think he says, I think he says, well, that's it for the uh, S&M stuff. I'll go back inside for the Asian stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Then we had a bit on. Is that the bit where the bit came from recycling all the porno? We did the take, cutaway to the yeah. Trees? Take that, yes. Renee Zellweger. That'll show you. And take any, take that anybody who likes Renee Zellweger. We're, we're that, taking shots that, at both of them. That'll show you to be anything other than flawless. <laughs> Just uh, we, get a, we get a little mean sometimes, and you know, I I, pers sorry, I personally have nothing against Renee Zellweger. I think she's a, I think she's a lovely woman. You're just gonna lie on this commentary? Uh, Boy, I'd really like to do yeah. my crotch right now. <laughs> okay, Quagmire, time to take off your training wheels. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I'm. It's funny that we finally sort of established that Quagmire has some sort of a uh, problem with his uh, overactive sexual nature. Yeah. When originally in the in the show, in the first few episodes, we weren't even quite sure what his character was. That was something that sort of came about, wasn't it? After he was just sort of a fifties guy. guy. Yeah, fifties. Well, that's, what's that? That's, Splash fight. <laughs> listen to Alec. That's Alex Borstein doing that voice of the girl on the right, and you can hear the hatred in her voice <laughs> for for girls of that type. Yeah, originally Quagmire, the big thing we were looking, didn't we look up like scat terminology or something like that, yeah, or like fifties hep cat yeah, stuff? Exactly. And that lasted a couple episodes, like yeah. four or five episodes, and then. Well, you know, we've told the story before. It was the the moment where oh, his quagmire, where, where his character uh, suddenly emerged, was in episode thirteen of season one, where he says, uh, "I got a question room. for you too. Why are you still here?" To the girls in bed with him. Yeah. I mean, that sounds a little like Magnum PI right there. I mean, he looks like Magnum PI in this shirt. Amazing. Where's, where's she from, Steve? Uh, 208. I think two of those uh, voices really? are Alex Borstein. Yeah, I could, I could name all Beth those people. But the one, the, on the, the one on the left was... Uh, That's Erica from, from... 15 Minutes of Shame. Exactly. Oh, my God, you're a horse. Sometimes we use uh, these old characters again that have lines, and actually sometimes even the sort of extra characters in the background that never speak sort of appear around the streets of Quahog. Normally we wouldn't be able to make fun of uh, Jewish people, but David here is a Jew, so that makes it okay. Yeah, yeah, speaking for the Jews, it's, it's fine. 
I'm the only They're happy that I'm speaking for them, too. <laughs> I'm going to say that. All of them. <laughs> that Cleveland auctioneer gag was actually something that was pitched... Uh, way back. Way back. And we found a, a very nice spot to use it here. It's always nice. Things are going to change. From this day forth... Sometimes we come up with these bits and they get cut for one reason or another. They don't fit or we got to cut them out for time. And if they're really good, they always will come back because we're really lazy and can't think of anything better. You notice in that music cue right there, anytime Walter Murphy can uh, incorporate the Family Guy theme into these cues, sometimes you miss it. But right there it was kind of a uh, grandiose arrangement of, uh, of the theme. Like the Brady Bunch used to do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Our apologies to Joan Cusack as well. Yes, uh, we have nothing nothing against her. Well, that was an accident. I mean, just sometimes no they're just. He didn't there. mean to fall on her. No, no. Peter, if you just let me talk, she I'll just happened to be there. Why you shouldn't do this? <laughs> later, later, Brian. I got to do something people will remember me for, which is why I've been. <laughs> this was this was added late in the process. You know, I vaguely. This was in the very last rewrite. <laughs> was it? <or> the <laughs> what the hell was wrong with people in? Uh, 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 they look at that, like, you know, what ga- what 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 jackass? Thought, oh, this I'll be able to get this in the air. If one wing won't lift you off, maybe seven wings. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it weighs four thousand yeah. pounds. I remember reading somewhere that those big bicycles with a big giant front wheel that they had around the turn of the century that Phineas and Barnaby ride were that was the first uh, version of a bicycle that came out, and then the one with the two normal size wheels came later. <laughs> like that was the second thing they sense. thought of. Yeah. <laughs> well, if a wheel, if a bicycle is going to hold a man, that wheel would have to be enormous. Uh, th- they apparently have a new line of Mezco action figures that involve Peter dressed as this character. Is that right? As Gary the No Trash Cougar. <laughs> One of their choices for that. Yeah. <laughs> Now, that bit we saw when Stewie uh, falls into the tree? Yeah. That originally was Peter, right? That originally was Peter. No, no, it was Stewie. Or very originally it was Stewie, but it was part of a separate gag. Man, they just came out of the trees. You saved my ass back there. You saved mine. Here's to snap. To snap. Oh, this sucks. I've been working on this all week and I keep coming up dry. Who am I kidding? I'm never going to be remembered for anything. Not like my great-great-uncles, the Siamese twins who fought each other in the Civil War. I'm seceding, like hell you were! Not too smart, huh? Yeah, did not think that one through. Peter. Very originally, that was Stewie, who, but he got launched into the tree through a different means. Uh, there was a bit where the family was trying to... When Peter gets on uh, the idea to set a world record, right. they are. there was a bit with seesaws and... and There's a reference to the Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch, right, and Stewie gets launched off a seesaw and thrown into the tree, and we changed it a couple different times, but we oh, and actually, now I think about it, it's the reason we came up with the plane, because we were trying to, we were sort of back-ending it and trying to come up with something that will still throw Stewie into right. a tree, because yeah. we liked calling back the uh, elves. Or the whatever they were. And originally, there was an even greater gap. We didn't come back to the keyboard elves, or the uh, Rice Krispie guys, guys in the bar until the very last scene, but that we had to move it up for different reasons. I have so lost track of what you're talking about. (laughs) I know. The the fans are uh, following along. They're on it. (laughs) They're writing it down, and they're studying it. Really? I heard a big click sound. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Setting this world record is going to make me famous, just like the world's fattest. Not sure if Stewie's wearing. This was originally. There was, this is what's left of of a much larger section where we went to the Guinness Book of the Guinness Book of World Records, records training facility, training. where you learn how to break world records. Yeah. And there was a whole sequence that that. that it's a couple uh, funny things. Yeah, it just. Who was it? What was it? Fred Durst. What was Fred it? Durst, oh, world's yeah. biggest douchebag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The guy who got hit by lightning every four seconds. And the, but also, the secretary had the long, those long fingernails. Remember the picture? That was funny yeah. yeah, but we ultimately cut that because story-wise, it was unnecessary. Yeah, I'm off to make trouble for the establishment. That line has never worked for me, by the way. Oh, I love you too, Peter. Even if you are full of nickels. Good night, honey. Oh, my God, Lois! I can't see! Uh, how about now? Nope, nothing. Well, that makes me feel much better. 
You can't see the spaceship either. My cousin Marshall insists if you look past the picture, you can see a spaceship. Can you please just tell us what's wrong with my husband? Oh, yes. Uh, well, you see, after ingesting such a large number of metal coins, Mr. Griffin appears to have succumbed to nickel poisoning, causing him to lose his sight. Oh, my God, Lois, I'm blind as a bat. I can't see a damn thing. You know what else you can't see? The writing on the wall. Vaudeville's dead, and TV's the box they're gonna bury it in. Back then, everybody had a specialty. I, for one, am a tumbler. Watch me leap through this big hoop. We go back to this vaudeville guy a couple times when we need a uh, good blow. This guy is new, though. This, the piano the player? This, this is another one. One of our animatic editors found this piece of music, and, <laughs> and we're now uh, joined by director Chuck Klein. Hi, everybody. Hey, Chuck. Hey, hey Chuck. Everyone else will say hi to him. Hi. Uh, I'm oh, oh, sorry. This is our, uh, the, what we were talking about, Chris, about the beginning of this season we were going to... Yeah, we were, we were dedicated this year to really finding Meg's, uh, the thing for Meg, the Meg's personality. We we're going to explore her character, and um, pretty much she's just a uh, punching, punching bag. bag. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's... Uh, well, she's, she's punching back a little bit. Like Cracked was a great magazine, wasn't it? That was uh, funny, funny stuff. Cracked magazine with... No, that was... Uh, <laughs> Sylvester the janitor. <laughs> the poor mad ripoff, I thought. Yeah. He wasn't Alfred E. Newman, but he, he held his own by God. He had that uh, painter's cap. And that little mop. Painter's caps are funny. But who, who, would, who would buy Cracked and not buy Mad? That's one of my not, favorite you wouldn't buy parts. Well. I got the comments this about this scene. Yeah. What did you say, John? It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, I, yeah I, this I, got, great. I got uh, worried calls from parents <laughs> in this one. Well, didn't someone write us a letter... <laughs> <laughs> where they were upset because we thought we were encouraging molestation. Well, that was on the uh, yeah. That, well, that was on the Quagmire one. The Quagmire looking at Lois, and then in the same episode, we have this scene. And a friend of mine who's a dad who watches the show with his son called me somewhat. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of an abuse of uh, his association with you. Somewhat. <laughs> I tell him to go to hell. I mean, you know, he shouldn't be letting his kids watch it. I don't let my kids watch this. Show. Yeah, yeah. It's worth noting that that uh, to any parents who get upset. David Goodman. I don't need the federal government to tell no. me how to raise my kids. He knows, he knows enough not to let his, ki his kids are too young to watch the show. And, uh, if only more parents could do their job, David. That, that's my thing. Now, in this scene, we had had at one point a, a cutaway of Brian in obedience school where he was sitting taking a t an exam with a bunch of other dogs or something. And then yeah. the instructor jingles some, jingles some keys, right? And everyone's, all the dogs scrambled out the door. Want to go for a ride? Chuck, you were you were very specific here about making sure that the Fortress of Solitude was uh, correct. Yeah, correct from the Superman movie. Yes. Although quite a bit different from the comic book Fortress of Solitude. So we are officially running low on Mr. But yet all the heroes are at the Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, I guess. The, yeah, it's true. That doesn't make a lot of sense. No. They would probably be in the JLA satellite. <laughs> it should be the Hall of Justice. Yeah. Hall of Justice, JLA satellite. Boy, we suck. Is there time to change it? <laughs> <laughs> Some people are gonna be upset. I'm going to the clamp. Yeah. So why, why do we cut that uh, cutaway? Isn't that funny enough? Uh, I think just for time. The show is long. Maybe we'll use it tomorrow. Are you? That happens sometimes in the uh, in the process too. It's just why we have to try to keep our stories simple so we don't end up having to cut the uh, it's cutaways. Just you're not funny enough. <laughs> that's well, we all know that's true. That's what it is. Sometimes we're just not. <laughs> what it was though was the, the what were the guy jingles the keys and Brian and all the other dogs. Go scrambling out, and you hear that sound of uh, like dog the, uh, toenails on right. the hard floor. <laughs> Just that clicking. Sounds funnier now, actually. Should have kept oh, uh, let me it. Here's God again. <laughs> yeah, once again, hitting on. Uh, now, is this joke coming up? It's an interesting little Jesus loophole. Christ. You're not allowed to say Jesus Christ on television unless you're actually referencing the, the actual person. So to use the exclamation Jesus Christ, we actually have to, to show it. it. Which is really silly. We, 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 we've talked about this in the room that a lot of us would, would, would uh, on, give up the right, you don't chance to say fuck or shit on TV to use simple terms like Jesus Christ and, oh my, and God damn it, which people say every day. But we can't give up saying fuck or shit because they won't let us say that either. So. Right, right. But, but if, 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 if given the choice... Sort of an imaginary argument you're having with There's yourself. often times where, you know, God damn it just sounds funnier than damn it. And people, uh, still got something up their ass. Former uh, Family Guy writers, uh, 
Garrett no. Donovan and Neil Goldman are now on Scrubs. Was that a little uh, little joke homage to them? No, probably not. No, I, and you know I keep meaning to bring it up with them, but uh, I don't know if they were offended or not. Oh, they'll see it. I'm not sure I've met them. No, I'm not. From that burning building. That freaking place was on fire. Actually, we tried to do a uh, Jesus Christ joke first season or second season where he. God is looking in a window on a ladder and says, Jesus Christ, then Jesus hops over on a ladder. And Garrett was uh, so horrified that we were using Jesus like that. We didn't do it. <laughs> yes, we did, we did have a very religious writer on the show at one point. Who would then turn around and pitch a rape joke. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very funny man. Now, what bothered me when this aired is that there was a commercial break right before that. Yeah. And it just, that, that was, the network insisted they, they would not let us run right into the closing credits. Um, because they, they want people to think there's more to come. Yeah, so I, watch I know some scene. people who missed this scene when this aired on television. It's an yeah. because... important point that Lucasfilm was completely supportive they were, of this. Lucasfilm was wonderful about this. They, 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 we sent them the scene because we needed to clear the music, and they said, "This is we, we love this. This is very, you know, this, this is pretty this, much this shot is for shot, right?" And they said, uh, "We." We just want you to make sure that you draw the characters properly, which is great because usually we have to change things for legal. And they, they were they were real. Uh, they, they've been they're, they're good people at Lucasfilm. I w- watch their movies. Yes, watch their movies. <laughs> yeah, they're not getting enough. <laughs> they don't get enough support. Yeah, <laughs> go out and watch Star Wars. Wait, what's uh, it called now? Star. Uh, too late, Steve. <laughs> I always like when we do unusual things with our credits like this. Yeah, yeah. this is yes. fun. This is fun it's stuff. A lot of fun. Yeah, the letters are blue. Very, very nice, cool. nice <laughs> star field in the back there. Really nice looking. This music also uh, is good. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. Read these credits slowly. A lot yeah, of you might need your VCR really, to uh, really work check hard that out. on the show. Hypnotic. Well done, Wonderful. Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. And Steve. And, and Steve. Steve. You too, Seth. Hey, thanks.